Everybody wants Kung Fu fighting. I don't have enough space to twirl this in here. I'm gonna hit something. Ah, my lights. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda 4. Po is to become the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace and needs to find and train a new dragon warrior to take over for him when a wicked sorceress named Chameleon plans to resummon all the master villains who Po has vanquished in the past to the spirit realm and take their power. Once I possess the Kung Fu of every master villain, no one will dare question my power. Who's that? The most powerful shape-shifting sorceress, the Chameleon. To start off with, I'm a huge fan of the first Kung Fu Panda film. I love that movie. I rewatch it all the time. It's like just kind of one of those films I put in the background as I clean or do things around the house or whatever it is. I really did enjoy number two with Gary Oldman as the villain. I wasn't a big fan of Kung Fu Panda 3 necessarily. I found that kind of boring at parts and hard to get through. So boring, man. Okay, okay. This to me was a little bit of an improvement on Kung Fu Panda 3 while still not quite reaching the same heights as the first two Kung Fu Panda films. And that's not to say like the movie isn't fun or entertaining because it is. There's some great awesome action scenes in this movie some really cool camera angles and camera movements that they do with the action scenes themselves there is some legit laugh out hilarious moments in this film the humor was really there at most of the time in this movie and I love the world that this movie takes place in with like, he's got two dads, his biological dad, and then obviously his foster dad being the duck played by the hilarious, great James Hong. I think it's such a really fun, interesting story. For this film, they really toned it down and kind of specified this movie and focus on about four or five major characters where the last kind of three films have really been a plethora and ensemble of a bunch of different character actors and voice actors playing these roles this movie was like it like i said it really centered on about four characters really only because of that the story is a bit smaller feels a bit more personal and smaller scale there is definitely a lack of epicness in this movie i guess is the way i could best put it and thus it also doesn't quite have the same emotional punch that especially the first two films really did have. And that's too bad because this movie could have been quite incredible emotionally. It just felt like though they were really just playing to the beats. They were just playing from moment to moment because it's the right thing and the right way to tell a story and played it very safe. And this is where this movie to me didn't quite match up, especially with the first two Kung Fu Panda films is that they didn't really take any risks with the, either the storytelling, with the action, with the uh, emotionality of the characters, with the way that they told the story. It just felt like a really fun, entertaining, yet run of the number sort of action animated film. And that's too bad because I always thought Kung Fu Panda was a bit different in the way that they took um, its action or the way they executed the animation in the film or whatever it may be. In this film, it felt like they were just sort of a paint by numbers kind of movie. Even in the voice performances, like Jack Black and Aquafina, and like, they, they just didn't really seem to be into it that much anymore. Of course, the standout performance is Viola Davis as Chameleon. She is just amazing. And I, I loved the villain in this movie. I thought it was really cool and interesting but they didn't really develop that character. Like she was fun and cool to look at and listen to and uh, see on screen, but they didn't give them any emotional drive or any sort of stakes in the film fell flat at times. This is definitely geared towards younger children now where I felt like maybe that first Kung Fu Panda film is a little bit more mature than it should be. And I like that. I loved that at the time when the movie came out and I still love it, you know, 15 years later. Generally, there's nothing actually too wrong with this film, but then again, there's nothing too exciting about this film either. It's pretty forgetful at times 
And even like Master Shifu, who I love that character, is barely in this movie. <sighs> you break my heart, Chris. You break my heart. That's a, as much as I can say about Kung Fu Panda 4. Before I give my final thoughts and grade on this film, please comment down below. What did you think of Kung Fu Panda 4? Are you a fan of this franchise? Which of the Kung Fu Panda films is the best one? Let me know with your thoughts and comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. I had a lot of fun with this movie. I was thoroughly entertained, but at the same time, I wasn't blowing out the water with it. I'm not coming out saying like, this is the best animated film of the year. I don't even know if it'll be in the top three necessarily. We'll have to wait and see. It's still pretty early in the year. So I'm going to go ahead and give Kung Fu Panda 4 a B minus. Thank you so much for checking out Mr. Teach Film Preach. Come back and check out some other reviews like Madam Web and Dune Part 2. Have a great day, everyone. Stay focused, stay awesome, and as always, let's get taught.